Hey everyone, my name is Chris Green. Today's video is all about some advanced editing techniques when it comes to vocals in PreSonus Studio One. This is gonna be a part of a series of videos that I'm doing on the YouTube song. Many videos on my channel have shown you how to record your first song in PreSonus Studio One, and I've created what has been evolving into the YouTube song, and I wanna do it justice. I think it helps me avoid copyright or any sort of issues in the future. It's a fun song to sing and play, so we're gonna be using that in this video, for example. We're gonna jump into vocal editing so we can tighten up a bunch of gang vocal tracks, like 10 to 12 vocal tracks. In an acapella section, we need to do things like tune them with Melodyne, make sure they're as tight as they can possibly be. We need to remove some of the noisiness of recording that you may not see all the time out there on the YouTube world. And then also we just need to mix a little bit of it to give it some reverb and ambience because that's going to be the first thing people hear when they listen to the YouTube song. My name is Chris Green. If you're interested in recording, music production, all this kind of stuff, please hit the like and subscribe buttons. And let's hop on into PreSonus Studio One. I'll try as much as possible to explain every step of the process. Just know that in today's video, the only thing I've recorded so far on the song is with this Neumann TLM 103. I have it here in my reflection filter, and I've been using this handy little pop filter I found on Amazon. This thing will go around the capsule with a little rubber band technique. I don't have to worry about those gooseneck pop filters that seem to always droop down at the worst times. Also, I was gonna say, if you don't have a Neumann TLM 103, this is a Rode NT2A, and I got this shock mount on Amazon. It was probably like 20 bucks or so. And to me, it seems a lot more rigid than the one that came with the NT2A. And as you can see, this thing is taking quite the beating. If you don't have the Neumann TLM 103 and you're looking for a good large diaphragm condenser, especially when you're getting started out, check out the Rode NT2A. I've got an Amazon influencer page. You can check out the description of this video where I try to put all my studio things. So if you're wondering like where to find the reflection filter or any of the stuff I'm using, feel free to check that out at your convenience. Now let's jump into PreSonus Studio One and get to editing some vocals. All right, everyone, here's my session in PreSonus Studio One for the YouTube song. We're gonna be doing a series of videos where I break down the drums, guitars, vocals, all that kind of stuff. The beginning of the song is a really big gang vocal section, almost like something to hear on a breakdown of a song, maybe like in a Zac Brown band song, for instance. I think this would be a good way to start the song and kind of get right to the chorus. And then acoustic guitar, all that kind of stuff is gonna come a little bit later. All of the blue tracks on the screen are my vocals. I've got a lead vocal that I sang three times into my Norman TLM 103, just singing the melody. And then the ones that are labeled Chris, low, one, two, and three, that's just an octave lower, still singing melody. We've got the low there. And then all these tracks down here, these bottom four, this is my wife, Lana. She's a whole lot better. She was a vocal major in school, so she can come in and do harmonies and all that kind of stuff a lot easier than me. As you can see though, her output was a lot quieter than mine, so we need to address that when it comes to mixing. She did a high, which is basically more movement in the harmony than normal. She did a pedal, which is kind of a pedal tone. When you're singing harmony and you're just staying on the five or you're staying on one note as long as you possibly can, it's kind of monotone, but you can blend that into the track to give it some texture there. And then these ones that are labeled Lana Low 1, Lana Low 2, that's doing the same thing that I did. The melody is too high for my wife to be singing comfortably. So she did sing the lower melody and you'll hear that as well. Without any mixing, no fader movements, no EQ, no reverb, no pitch correction, anything like that, I'm gonna hit play and you're gonna hear what it sounds like. This is what we're starting with and from here we need to mix something that sounds a whole lot more epic. So here we go, let's hit play. Hit subscribe and maybe like so this video can have a chance in the algorithms dance. Hit subscribe. All right, so the first thing you notice is that we have clipped the signal. So our main output is just too loud. When you start adding more and more tracks, this can happen with guitars, drums, or anything else. The more tracks you add, the cumulative effect of all of those tracks playing at the same time can cause you to clip. So we first need to go through and gain stage. The easiest way to gain stage in PreSonus Studio One is to grab these white squares that are in the middle of the tracks. 
you can see this white square. If I click and drag this thing down, visually you can see the blobs get a lot smaller. So we are clip gaining all of our tracks to make sure that we have a more controlled sound coming out. This is gonna benefit my wife's vocal because it's gonna to have to have more gain and then some of my tracks need to come down because they're probably too loud. So on my inspector view, which is at the top, I'm gonna to hit this I key. Any track I have selected, I now have this fader with a meter on the side. I'm gonna look at the meter and I wanna to try to get all of my tracks individually so that they are in between negative 12 and negative 24. That'll give me a good starting point for the mix. So the way that I do that, I hit the S key on the keyboard to solo like the lead vocal track. And I'm gonna take this white square and I'm just gonna move it up and down depending on where the metering is at. So let's see. Hit subscribe and maybe like so this video can have a chance in the okay so that one ended up being turned down by negative 11 decibels okay safe to say since i'm using the same microphone with the same gain settings it's going to be a similar move for all of these tracks so let's go through each of them i'll clip gain adjust them i might fast forward this section but just know that i'm looking at the meter on the left side of the screen i want to see it hovering in between negative 12 and negative 24 as much as possible and then we'll listen to what that did to the mix. So now I've got all the tracks clip gained and visually you can see on the screen, this looks like it's gonna sound a lot more mixed because Lana's vocal, my vocals, they all look a lot more similar in size. I can hit the space bar, let's take a listen. Now, still no EQ, still no pitch correction. All we've done is use clip gain to change our gain structure. Hit subscribe, maybe like, so this video can have a chance in the algorithm's dance. Hit subscribe. So one of the things when it comes to clip gain is if you're finding it jumping too much, so as you're grabbing that white square, if you're moving it up and down and it's just going too drastic, if you hold the shift key, it'll give you more of a nuanced move of the clip gain. So it'll start moving by point decibel, point one decibel rather than one or two decibels at a time. So if you need more finesse, you need more control of the clip gain, hold the shift key while you drag the things up and down. And I think that sounds a whole lot better. The next thing I want to do is chop off the beginning and the endings of the tracks. Whenever we start recording, we usually give ourselves a buffer about one or two measures or so, but at the end especially, you can hear a lot of the keyboard clacking. That's me reaching over to the keyboard and hitting stop on the space bar. So we want to remove that sound. The easiest way to do this, we're just going to go and grab the end of these tracks. You can see the two arrows forming there. I can click and drag this to where I can see the blob has ended right around measure the second beat of measure 12 or so. Let's just see what this sounds like if we chop them all off right there. Okay, let's take a listen to that ending specifically. I'm just gonna hit spacebar. Dance, hit subscribe. Okay, we've knocked off the B of subscribe. I could tell that was gonna happen because visually you can see we're chopping off some of these things. So I'm selecting all these tracks. I'm just gonna drag this out a little bit further. So now we're closer to the middle of measure 12. Let's take a listen. Subscribe. Very good. And the last thing you wanna do is add a quick little fade out. So this one, if, the more you zoom in in PreSound Studio One, the more finesse you're going to be able to have. I only need to have about a 12 millisecond fade out. Let's take a listen now. Subscribe. It sounds a whole lot better than hearing that keyboard clacking over and over again. Another way of doing this is if you select all of the tracks and hit three on your keyboard, that gives you a slice tool. I can make a slice right here, right before we start singing. I can hit one to then select all these other tracks, hit the delete key. Then I'll select all the tracks again. I'm gonna zoom in and this time, instead of a fade out, we're doing a fade in. As I zoom in, I see I can get even more of a cutoff. So let's start it right there. That's like the fourth beat of the, going into the fourth beat of the seventh measure or so. So now we have gain staged the tracks. We made them all similar in level. We've 
created a fade out and a fade in so that things just sound a lot cleaner. Let's hit the space bar at the beginning as these vocals enter. Hit subscribe, maybe like, so this video can have a chance in the algorithm's dance. Hit subscribe. Very good. The next thing we need to do is some pitch correction. This is where Melodyne comes in. Back in the day, Melodyne used to come with kind of an introduction version that comes with PreSound Studio One Artist, I believe. And then if you wanted to upgrade, which I did at some point, you can get like the assistant or the studio version, I think, of Melodyne. Either way, I don't use Melodyne to its fullest extent. I'm usually just moving a few pitches around or doing some general tuning. So the first thing I want to do is go to my lead vocal track, the first blob, and this will apply for all of the tracks. So I'll show you in detail what I'm doing with the first one, and then I'll kind of fast forward through the others. But if you right click anywhere in that audio region, I'm going to go to edit with Melodyne, or say you can hit control M. As soon as I do, it opens up an edit window, and you can see all of these pitches represented in the edit window. So anything orange is a pitch that was tracked in Melodyne. All right, the first thing I want to point out is after Melodyne analyzes your pitches, you just want to take a listen to the recording. So anywhere above the white bar, you can just double click. Hit subscribe and maybe like so this video can have a chance in the algorithm's dance. Hit subscribe. Okay, I'm doing a little weird thing with my voice. I don't think that's the fault of Melodyne because we haven't done any tuning at this point, but on the word scribe, it's almost like a, a flip happens in my voice. You can listen to it here. Hit subscribe. That may not be too tragic if we listen to it in context of the rest of the mix. But here's one thing I want to show you. When it analyzes the pitches, it doesn't always get it perfectly right. So there's this one called a note separation tool. So we want to go to, goodness gracious, note separation tool. And when I do, I've got this word right here dance. on dance. It's not staying on the same note. I didn't sing dance one note, I went dance. So it didn't pick up that pitch. And you can tell because the line goes down a full half step and yet the blob stays in the middle. So if you see this kind of error, you can just double click and as soon as you do, it will separate the two into two different notes. So Melodyne is supposed to be looking for pitches, not necessarily words, okay? So it may have a word like dance. Dance is only one syllable. But of course you can have multiple notes represented in the word dance. So hold the right mouse button. You can switch over to pitch tool again. And now we can manipulate that second half of the word dance. So how to tune uh, in Melodyne, one of the easier things for you to do is to select your track area and hit control A. That will select all of my pitches. So anything that is red colored, that is what I'm manipulating at this point. And there is a macro pitch editor. Macro meaning it's just affecting more than one pitch overall. If I click this button right here, it gives me these sliders. If I move pitch center further to the right, the more to the right I go, the more it's going to snap it to where it's supposed to be. So obviously if you move it all the way to 100%, you're going to be locked into the grid pretty strong. Most people out there, 2024, if you see people singing on Instagram or whatever, they're probably locking it to 100%. You play around with it so that it fits whatever genre or whatever style you're going for. If you're trying to do something that's more natural and it's not as easy to notice, around 30 to 40% is going to be a good starting point, and then you can take it up from there. So let's start at 40% and just take a listen to what that did. Hit subscribe and maybe like so this video can have a chance in the algorithm's dance hit subscribe yeah that sounds fine to me so the more vocals i have again i'm not going for this to be like an effect like a t-pain type of thing this genre is going to be much more like rock and country than it is going to be like edm or something that maroon 5 would be doing but i'm going to do the same process for all of these tracks so just to do it quickly, I can select my second one here. I want to solo it, right click, edit with Melodyne. I want to select all of the pitches that are represented. I go up to pitch macro, move pitch center to about 46% or so. I can even move up pitch drift a little bit. And let's take a listen to both of these lead vocals together. 
Hit subscribe and maybe like so this video can have a chance in the algorithm stance. Hit subscribe. Okay, we'll adjust the mixing a little bit later. Whenever you are doing doubles of your vocal, the more pitch correction you use on a double, the more you're gonna lose the effect of the double in the first place. So the reason it sounds interesting when you have a lead vocal and then that lead vocal duplicates itself is that there are all these little fluctuations between the lead vocal and the others. If you tune everything to 100%, you lose the effect of having the double, okay? There are gonna be noticeable differences. When you're hearing that example, there's almost this phasing effect that's happening. Well, that is the benefit of doing double. I don't wanna lose that. Also, when we get to mixing with the faders and EQ, the doubles are not gonna be mixed in the same way that my lead vocal is. I want my lead vocal to be first and foremost, probably 80% of what you're hearing. And then that other 20% is being fought amongst by the background vocals. We'll get to mixing just a little bit. For right now, it's just all pitch correction. So let's do the same process for all these tracks. I'll fast forward at this point. All right, so all the vocals have been pitch corrected. So let's go through real quick. We've gained stage, made sure all the levels were about the same. We've clipped off the end and the beginning of the tracks and did nice fade in and fade out. We've now pitch corrected with Melodyne on all of the tracks. Let's take a listen now. Again, we haven't done any EQ, reverb. We haven't moved any faders. We haven't done any bussing anything like that just yet. Let's take a listen to the sound. Hit subscribe, maybe like, so this video can have a chance in the algorithm stance. Hit subscribe. All right, now I want to start moving some faders. So the first thing I want to do is set up a bus. A bus is essentially going to group these tracks together. We can process them all together as one, or we can make little pit stops along the way. So if I select all of my vocal tracks together and I select add bus for selected channels, I can then name this my vocals bus. This vocals bus, I can right click and go to add bus for selected channels. Then I have a mix bus. My mix bus then goes to the main output. But of course, these are not all lead vocals, so I wanna be able to separate a few different things out. I've got my lead vocal, Chris Lead. Everything else, I wanna actually send this to what's gonna be called background vocals. Or I'm gonna say BKGVS. I'm gonna move this in front of my vocals bus, it's gonna to output to my vocals. So as you can see, I have a lead vocal that's going straight to the vocals bus. I have several background vocals that are going to a background vocals bus specifically. I can basically go into my background vocals bus and I can already turn this down by like negative nine and take a listen to what that does to the overall mix. So my lead vocal should be right where it was at zero. And then this background vocals bus effectively means that I've moved the meters, the faders down for each of them. Hit subscribe, maybe like. So this video can have a chance in the algorithm stance, hit subscribe. All right, I already know that there's gonna be some moving within that that I want to change. The low recorded vocals, so when I did the hit subscribe, all that kind of stuff, I need to move that stuff down. So Chris Low, one, two, and three, I wanna take their individual faders and I wanna move them down by at least negative six. So with them all selected, I can do negative six. I do the same thing with Lana Low 1 and 2, but I only want those to go down by about 4 or so. Let's take a listen to that. Hit subscribe and maybe like So this video can have a chance In the algorithm stance Hit subscribe Already sounds good, but now we need to do some panning. So when I'm panning them out, it's going to sound more natural. It's going to give them their own dedicated space. So with my lead vocal doubles, I don't want to pan them out too far, but I'm going to go ahead and put them at left 30. 
and then the other one at right 30. So those will balance each other out. Chris Low 1 and Chris Low 2. Let's go left 50. Lana High, I'll put it left 30. Pedal Tone, I keep. Let's do right 30. And then Lana Low will go left 50 and then right 50. You can kind of play around with the panning. The more vocal tracks you have, the more you can spread these things out. Or you can do kind of a classic thing and just have left, center, and right panning if you choose. Let's take a listen to what that's done. Hit subscribe and maybe like So this video can have a chance In the algorithm's dance Hit subscribe Okay, those lows that I'm doing on Chris Low 1, 2, and 3, I feel like they still need to go down some more. So let's try negative 9. Take a listen to that. Hit subscribe and maybe like So this video can have a chance In the algorithm's dance Hit subscribe very good. Now I want to process all the background vocals together because they're all going to have a similar EQ to them. I can go to my background vocals bus and up on inserts, I can go to pro EQ. As soon as I do, I want to take a low cut filter and I'm also going to make use of a high shelf, but I don't want the high shelf to be boosting the high frequencies of my background vocals. I actually want to dull them out a little bit. And whenever you dull your vocals, it's going to give the appearance or the sound or perception of the vocals being further back than what your lead vocal is. I want my lead vocal to be bright and present and right in your face. Background vocals, I almost want to sound like they are further away from the lead vocal. So I'm going to roll off some low end and I'm going to roll off some high end as well. Let's take a listen to that. I'll kind of hit play. I'll let this thing loop and I'll mess around with the EQ and you can see what I'm doing on screen. Hit subscribe and maybe like So this video can have a chance In the algorithm's dance Hit subscribe Very good. I can tell that Lana's vocal's coming out nice and full there. I'm going to add a compressor to my background vocals. The compressor is going to take away a lot of the dynamics of elite of the vocals, but them being background vocals, I want them to be more consistent so that they are locked in at a certain level. So let me mess around with this compressor. I'll hit play. You'll see what I'm doing on screen and you can copy the settings if you'd like. Hit subscribe and maybe like so this video can have a chance in the algorithm's dance. Hit subscribe. Hit subscribe and maybe like. So this video can have a chance in the algorithm's dance. Hit subscribe. Okay, so ended with about a 15 millisecond attack, a 39 millisecond release. I could probably increase that release time a little bit. And on the gain reduction meter, I'm always looking for something around three to six decibels of gain reduction. And of course, I want to add that back. So I added five decibels of makeup gain, about four and a half to one ratio. With a lead vocal, I may not do something as extreme as this. But again, these are background vocals. I want them to serve a certain purpose. So let's hit play and listen to the EQ and compressor. Hit subscribe and maybe like So this video Hit subscribe and maybe like So this video we're doing some effect there. Last thing I want to do is mess with some reverb. So on my background vocals bus, I'm going to add a room reverb and play around with that. There should be a preset set up. Let's go with something like, we'll start with the cold cellar. And the thing I like about this cold cellar is only got a one second reverb. It's not about it having a long decay for my background vocals. I actually want that decay to be really short, but I want them to sound like they're in some sort of space, like they're in a chamber, they're in a hall, somewhere performing this live. And it can mix around, mess around with the mix knob, and you'll see me do that on screen. So let's play around with those. Hit subscribe, and maybe like. 
So this video can have a chance In the algorithm's dance Hit subscribe Hit subscribe And maybe like So this video can have a chance In the algorithm's dance Hit subscribe Hit subscribe And maybe like so this video can have a chance In the algorithm's dance Hit subscribe Nice, so we went with the cold cellar and I adjusted this so that it's set to more of a large hall I still got a 1.1 second delay I've got the mix knob at about 34% I increased the dampness so I'm trying to get rid of some of the S's and some of the upper frequency stuff that seems to bounce around the room. I want it to sound, again, I want it to sound more muffled if possible, okay? So now we've got EQ, compression, and reverb on our background vocals. When it comes to the lead vocal, I don't wanna to do too much processing at this moment because we still have the rest of the song to record. I may end up doing the lead vocal again at the end of the song once all the tracks are in. Might break out the SM7B or different microphone just to make sure that the lead vocal is what it's supposed to be. So I'm gonna do things in segments for a while and if I need to re-record the lead vocal because I'm in a home studio, I can certainly do that. But for now, let me just drag over the EQ that we're using earlier and instead of this being a cut at the high shelf frequency we're going to boost there and then maybe we're going to roll off some of this mid-range let me eq a little bit of the lead vocal i'll add some compression and maybe a tiny bit of that reverb as well but not as much you'll see what i'm doing on the screen hit subscribe and maybe like so this video can have a chance in the algorithm's dance hit subscribe Hit subscribe, and maybe like, so this video can have a chance in the algorithm's dance. Hit subscribe, hit subscribe, and maybe like, so this video can have a chance in the algorithm's dance. Hit subscribe. Hit subscribe, and maybe like, so this video can have a chance in the algorithm's dance. Hit subscribe. Okay, I like the sound of that. If you didn't notice already, here is the EQ plugin. I did want to boost some more of the highs for now. It's going to set my lead vocal nice and bright, whereas the background vocals are a little bit more rolled off and dull. I've got the compressor set to a 2.4 ratio about 7.7 .7 millisecond attack time 40 millisecond release time i'm using a de -er just to tame uh, some of the harshness that you're getting from the compressor and the s's that we added all that treble frequency stuff in the eq and then the reverb plugin is the same one we used on the background vocals but i turned the mix knob down to like 5.5 percent because i just don't want the lead vocal to sound like it's pushed back further in the mix as well so in this video, just to recap again, we started off with gain staging. We wanted to make sure that all of our vocal tracks are relatively the same level because not every singer records at the same volume. Next, we added a fade out and a fade in to make sure that we have a clean beginning and ending to our tracks. We don't have any of this sound of a keyboard or something that happened in the studio. Then we went through and used some pitch correction from Melodyne to make sure that especially our background vocals are locked in with the notes that they're supposed to be on. Then we started bussing things out with faders and panning, making sure that everything's at an appropriate level. The background vocals do need to be quieter than the lead vocal. I want the lead vocal to stand out nice and loud. As you can see, the panning decisions were relatively minor. We didn't do anything far left and far right. That could change in the future. If I want to go with something, a more dense mix might benefit from sending things all the way to the left and all the way to the right instead of doing this kind of in-between stuff. My fader movements, as you can see, the low stuff where I'm doing the like octave below the melody, I did want to turn that down a lot more than the lead vocal because it just comes across through the headphones a lot louder than what it probably should. And then Lana's 
background harmony because she's doing harmonies and things like that. I wanted her to be a little bit louder than my background vocals were. My background vocals bus was turned down to negative nine on the fader. We did some EQ moves to make them sound a little bit rolled off and muffled. We did some compression with a 4 to 4.5 to 1 ratio. We added some room reverb to our background vocals. And then our lead vocal, we just temporarily did some boosting on the high end. We cut out a little bit of the mid mid range mud region. We have a compressor, a 2.4 to 1 ratio, a de-esser, and a little bit of reverb. With all that being said, now let's just take a listen to somewhat final part of the intro to this song. So the YouTube song is going to be part of a video series. As we're recording this, I want to document as much as possible so you can see every step of the process. And then hopefully at the end of this, we have a good sounding song. I'm going to hit play. Make sure you hit the like and subscribe buttons for more videos like this. And I'll see you at the next one. Hit subscribe and maybe like so this video can have a chance in the algorithm's dance. Hit subscribe.